This is a 2005 Polaris Phoenix. The engine's made by Aeon or Eon, however you say it, A E I O N. It's a Chinese made engine, and um, they actually run pretty decent for a Chinese engine, but the, they do have their difficulties. And what the issue we're having with this one is, is the starter clutch has failed in some way. Uh, for a lot of years, this machine, when you hit the starter, you hear it free spin without turning the engine over. But then when you hit it the second time, it grabs and goes. Uh, but now it never grabs the engine. I'm going to show you what it's doing. You can hear that, that the starter just free wheels. Uh, without turning the engine over and it never grabs and so we need to take this apart We're going to remove the case off this side of the engine I'm not going to go over all the fine details of removing these pieces and removing that foot plate to give us full access to it uh, But I'm going to cut back to it when we're at that point of removing this right side of the case off the engine so we can access that starter clutch uh, something that happens is that the starter only spins it's not like an automotive starter where it's got the uh, I think it's a, called a Bendix where the starter uh, gear actually uh, projects out and then spins uh, most motorcycle starters if not all that I know of they just spin and then that that starter is spinning and then there's another gear that's intermediate uh, to it. We'll see all that when we open it up. Another gear that's intermediate. And then that intermediate gear is what engages this starter clutch that's connected to the flywheel of the engine. So I'm going to take some of these plastics off to give us access. And uh, I'll come back to you when we remove that side of the case off. So we have our plastic floor plate out of the way. That should give us access to get this case off of here. Obviously, we're going to have to remove bolts like this, but there's one under here that I know, this one over here, I'm sorry you can't see it very well, under this uh, shield for the oil filter that will have to come out. That one may not have to. I apologize in advance we're finding this stuff out together because I could not find any other videos on the internet of this side of the case being removed on this model I'm guessing that, that one can stay for this uh, sight glass for the oil fill um, but we'll find all that out together there is once you've got all the the bolts that are retaining this in there is a tab here that you can hit from the other side to go ahead and pop this loose there's two tabs, but I, I don't know that I'll be able to wedge something in there to pry. We may have to get like a, a 3 8 extension from the other side and tap that off. I don't know if uh, any of these have to be removed, so that's going to be another thing we'll find out together. Hopefully I'll remember when this comes off to, to reconnect and uh, update you on that. I'm going to try and remember to do that. Also, this crankcase breather tube is going to have to come off, obviously. That'll be easy to get off there, though. So I think all these are probably uh, eight millimeter. Uh, if not, I'll update you in the next video on that, and the next section of this video on that as well. So we ran into our first unanticipated problem. These bottom two bolts will not come out. They touch the frame. They're just barely not enough clearance. So maybe on yours you won't have to do this. But we're going to remove this front uh, engine mount. It's a 17 millimeter lock nut, nylon lock washer on this side, and then a 14 millimeter on the other side. We're going to remove that bolt and then wedge something in there to give us uh, a little clearance. We only need a hair, so I don't think we'll have to remove these back uh, transmission mounts. So let's take that out. I'll wedge a 2x4 or something under there. You don't want to pry on these fins, so be careful where you wedge it at. Uh, but we're going to take this bolt out to give us the clearance to get these bottom two uh, case bolts out of here. 
So there's not much room in there. You're going to have to cut a taper in a really short section of 2x4. And we'll, now that we got the bolt out anyway, let's see our bolts out. We're going to hammer that under there. Now there are some fins under there that you do have to be careful. So you got to do this at your own risk. But just kind of gently tap that under there. And we don't have to lift it much. And uh, when I hammer that in, uh, that'll lift the motor a little bit. You'll be able to see how much is lifted by this. Uh, you can't see it here, but to the naked eye, without looking through a camera, you'll be able to see that engine lift up uh, through this hole and tell how far it's gone. We've only got to go a like quarter inch, something like that, to get those bottom case bolts out. So we got our little wedge in there. Uh, you can see how much of that lifted it, about that much. I actually had to get a little cheaty and use the other side of that 2x4 that I cut and get under this side, which is a lot more risky because these fins are a lot bigger over here, just to give it the last little bit where the I actually tilted the motor like this. Um, the bolt that's under here is hardest to get out because the frame... Uh, comes up just a hair for the foot plate over the main part of the frame. And then the one that's near this brake pedal that also we needed the clearance for, I had to press the brake pedal down to give it the clearance to come out. There is one short bolt in the bunch. It's the one that comes out of this uh, near the starter here, uh, right below the starter. There's uh, what all your bolts look like. They are indeed 8 millimeter heads on them. And it looks like we've got uh, nine of them here that have to come out. So now I'm going to take this out. I'll put it back in later when we're putting those bolts in probably. And uh, I'll tap from the other side uh, on this tab that's here. I'll probably come through with an extension. It's like a 3 8 inch ratchet extension. And uh, we'll find out if uh, maybe some of these other bolts like, like those need to come out. All right, I'm ready to tap from the other side. I'll catch this on video. Let's see what happens. It did break loose. Uh, there might still be something holding it somewhere, so let's find out. So that was enough bolts to go ahead and get this case off. Something you need to keep in mind is this fell out when I removed the case, and it will likely fall out on you. So you're going to have to fish that out of your oil drain pan in all likelihood. It's got a spring on it if it would focus for me. And then that engages a little pin that runs across that... Uh, inside that shaft in there so you have to put that back on when you're done so don't forget that uh, you can see obviously what the problem is these three bolts are what holds that starter clutch into the back side of the flywheel here and they're sitting like they're sitting because this is magnetized to work in conjunction with the stator to charge the machine you can also see there's a lot of copper in there what's happened is is those bolt heads as they've backed out, they've damaged the stator. So we're gonna we're gonna need a new stator. Uh, in all likelihood, we're gonna need a flywheel puller tool. I may take a stab at it here before I get the flywheel puller. And you can see that these are hoopa juped enough that the the threads on the starter clutch are probably also trashed. So I was considering just threading that back in with some Loctite, but I think that's a bad idea. They've probably also fatigued too. They're probably more likely to shear off later if I reinstall those. So I'm going to get the light in here so you can kind of see how this starter system works. You can see just the corner of this tiny little starter gear here. That's what spins around when you bump your starter. This is what I was calling uh, an intermediate shaft earlier. Uh, so this this just sits there on this shaft here. 
spins around and this is how the power from the starter gets the flywheel and it goes through the, the, the clutch that's on this like it will only spin one direction and uh, when the motor takes off it uh, disengages from the rest of this stuff so anyway uh, next step we need to get this flywheel off I imagine I'll have to buy a puller but I'm gonna take a stab at it and if I'm successful without the official tool I'll let you know so the next thing we need to do is remove this nut and the washer behind it it's a 19 millimeter I used a quarter inch impact to remove it came off perfectly easily with an impact it's hard to do if you don't have an impact uh, because you're gonna have to hold this flywheel still while you turn this nut um, but it came right off even with my puny little quarter inch impact now the puller on eBay that's listed for Polaris Phoenix this uh, flywheel puller will look something like this listed on eBay they're fairly expensive this one doesn't say that it's listed uh, for that it lit uh, that it fits a Polaris Phoenix uh, but this does in fact fit it's an M30 with a 1.5 pitch you can see there here's some of the packaging off of it this one was like 20 bucks there's some part numbers that's the brand this in fact does fit it remember to thread this guy all the way out first time I had it on there it it felt like it wasn't threading in and maybe I had purchased the wrong one but it's because this shaft was in too far and only partially let that engage so you'll thread that on here normal right hand thread a lot of these uh, flywheels uh, when you put a puller on their left hand thread but this one is a normal right hand thread so you'll thread that all the way in to engage as many threads as possible on the flywheel then you'll put a wrench on this to hold this still while you turn this inner shaft and that will pull the flywheel out. So I'm going to uh, cut this video here and get that set up and uh, I'll see you in the next section. One thing I forgot to say that should be pretty obvious is you need to remove this thing from the end of the shaft. You don't want to be pressing on this as you uh, pull the flywheel. So don't forget to pull this out. So I've got my wrench on those flats on the main uh, body of the puller. This happens to be a 19 millimeter again here. I don't know, you might be able to use an impact, but I'm guessing an impact won't allow you to feel things uh, if they're breaking. So I'm just going to use my normal hand tools for this part. We'll take a pretty large amount of force to get this off of here. see it break loose now I tried one of those three jaw pullers and a different gear puller that I had in a set from Harbor Freight and that didn't grab things correctly and I was starting to risk scratching the flywheel with the the jaws on things so uh, it looks like you probably will have to buy a puller to get this off and you can see that was pretty tight took a pretty large amount of force but now it has broken loose you can see the little keyway there maybe there's your keyway so don't lose this key that's in there that is loose and that can pop out and normally this starter clutch would be attached to the back of the flywheel but because our bolts are out uh, it's unattached but you know there's our flywheel clutch and the weights that allow that to work the way it's supposed to so time to put our new one of these in and uh, start reinstalling things so this this clutch does just fall off of this gear I'm gonna flip that over and show you see it just falls right off of there but when you get your new one, you're going to have to be careful because you can see where those weights were, these weights that were down in this uh, 
machined out area. There's a spring, and then the spring has a little uh, like protective cover around it. Drawing a blank on what you would call that. So if those fall out on your new one, if you're not careful, you're going to have to get a little pick, and it's going to be a lot of work trying to get that cap back on the spring and then the weight back in there. Uh, so be careful uh, on the new one. New one's coming in the mail, or else I'd just show you right here in this step how to do it. But I wanted to make sure I knew how that came off of there. So that's how that guy comes off of there. Our new one will plop down in here, and uh, I'll probably clean that out while we got everything out of there. Uh, all that material that's in the bottom. I won't go crazy with the uh, brake clean or the carburetor cleaner on all those gears because I want them to have a little oil on them when this thing starts back up. But I'm going to clean out the bottom of these cases and we'll get to that stator here uh, as well. In fact, we may do it next while we're waiting in the mail for that starter clutch because I do have the stator. So we'll probably go to the stator next and then later in the video we'll actually finish putting that clutch back on. So to remove this stator, this is a four millimeter Allen here and these are eight millimeter here. You can see our new one to see what we're dealing with to have to remove. That's our new stator. This is that uh, pickup. And then here's the plug. I believe our plug runs over to the other side of the machine, uh, right in behind this panel here. So we're going to remove the seat and we're going to remove this panel here next so we can access that plug to get our new stator in. To get this panel off, there's a normal Phillips head here and then these silly clips where it's like a Phillips head. And you can see that somebody's already had these out and stripped them a little bit. It's a normal Phillips head, but it's like a plastic clip where you have to, I'm not getting very good light in there, where you have to unthread this a little bit so you can pull the clip out. A lot of times you'll have to get a little pick in there behind it to help that come out. And I'll show you what that looks like when that comes out. It's a Phillips head inside like a clip that works kind of like a wall anchor. Here's what those little plastic clips look, look like. You can see this one is threaded out enough. Once it's threaded out this far, we should be able to just pull that off of here, see? But what happens is on that outer collar, when that inner Phillips head threads into it, it flares out and holds that on. So once this, once this is threaded out, you'll be able to pull that clip out. And just be really careful with things because these tend to pop and roll halfway across your shop floor. So be careful when you're pulling that off, but basically set this stuff aside somewhere safe and then finish pulling this plastic panel off. Uh, something else, if you're not familiar with these, a lot of times you have to pinch this back together to get that to push back through when you reinstall it because uh, it kind of settles in that spread out position and you'll have to push it back in to get that set back in place and then thread this in and then it will flare out again like I said like a wall anchor and that's what holds it on and now you can see the other end of the plug for that stator I'm going to take this out as well that should be a 10 millimeter to give me a little room to pull that apart we'll have to cut this zip tie and put a new zip tie in there when we plug in the new stator uh, and then that's it that run you'll see how that wires routed underneath and you just kind of match the factory routing when you install the new stator so we removed our old stator from the case as well as this pickup these are the eight millimeter headed bolts that came out of the pickup these are the bolts that came out of the stator that use that four millimeter allen and something else to remember, you'll see it when you take yours out, but there's this green ground wire that uh, almost looks like a washer as you're pulling it out. But that green ground wire needs to be grounded to this pickup, and that bolt will run through it like this, of course, when you put the new one back in. So our case is off. We've cleaned it. Probably a good idea to blow it out with some compressed air too, in case there's some, if you're like 
my situation where I've got some copper filings in there just to get the little particles out of it. And uh, I'm going to put the new stator in this and then match the route, the factory routing for the wiring while it's still in there. And then I'm going to pull the old wiring and plug this new stator in. A couple things when you install the new stator. Remember that main wiring harness uh, goes in behind this pickup. And remember your ground wire goes underneath this uh, bolt right here. So main wiring harness. Here, here's what the factory one looks like. On that bottom side, you can see that main wiring harness out of the stator goes down, and then the wiring goes behind this guy here, and you got the ground. And I tighten these down by hand so you can feel that you're not going to strip them out. I wouldn't use the impact when you tighten these guys back down. So here's our new starter clutch. Uh, finally came in the mail. Uh, this Chinese one, I don't know if you buy a factory one, if it will look anything like this. Uh, probably not. There's actually some Phillips head screws on the back side. I don't particularly like that, but it's not what this video is about. So this plastic piece I'm going to leave in there as I push that on. I think that's some kind of retainer so these things don't pop back out. Maybe they pop out this, you know, this would pop out that way if that wasn't in there. So... I'm going to leave that grease in it. That stuff will thin out. Kind of push those weights back in. This one's labeled outside, but um, if yours isn't, it's the side that you can see these weights on is what uh, goes on that side of the gear. The welded ring side of the gear is what goes back on the crankshaft here. It'll go in like that. I'm going to use two hands so this thing doesn't drop out and I lose those weights. Might have to wiggle that gear a little bit to get that back on. Ready for our flywheel. We did get our new bolts in this kit as well. Don't know if your factory one will come with new bolts. I mean, I'm assuming it would, but I don't know that. Line your keyway up. Make sure your keyway didn't drop out. I'm going to go ahead and... Get that installed before I put the clutch bolts in, those three clutch bolts. I'm going to get that cinched down. That will pull in. Uh, but we should still be able to move this clutch behind here in order to line those bolts up. So I'm going to stop the video while I get this tightened down. So I use my quarter inch impact with a 19 millimeter to tighten this back down. Hammered on it for just a few seconds to make sure it was at least as tight as it was when I removed it. You can reach behind here now and spin that clutch one direction anyway. You can't spin it this way, obviously. But you can spin it this direction and you can see there goes the weights. We'll spin it a little more, get our holes to line up. Now we'll put the three bolts in. These are my new bolts. The factory ones are the same size Allen heads, a six millimeter. I'm going to get those in and then uh, put our little spring doohickey back in here. And then uh, we're ready to put that case back on. And fill it up with oil so we've got our starter clutch bolts in this little guy's in that's uh, torqued down uh, the case is cleaned out I don't know the, this little guy I don't know if I said that yet that's I'm, I'm, I'm scared to death I'm gonna forget this one uh, guess uh, gears are meshed correctly kind of check that 
Uh, I'm ready to put this, uh, you know, you probably should put a new gasket on. It looks like mine survived and I'm going to risk it and not uh, clean those surfaces up and put a new gasket on. I'm just going to roll with it. It looks like this will probably seal pretty well. There, It sticks a little bit proud of the case. So I think uh, that new seal is going to be okay there. We'll find out. Now, because there's some stuff uh, that was in the, the case of this one, all that copper that you remember from earlier, I'm probably going to put a little bit lighter weight oil, maybe some 5W30 in it and run it up to you know temperature see if i can get some of that to go uh settle into the old filter and then i'll do an oil change on it so uh, we should be cleaned out then at that point now because this is magnetized that will pull in on this some of the metal that's on that stator so this will kind of suck in and then we've got our actually i'll show you that We've got our guides here to make sure it lines up. There's one here and one down here that'll guide it into your case. I think this should fit without putting that wedge back in because I think we just needed that wedge in. Yeah. Pushes in. It's not pushing in completely because that thing stuck a little proud, but we should be okay and then I'll pop this cap off and fill it up with oil after I put the bolts in of course uh, we'll reconnect this tube if we can find it here it is that guy will get reconnected too so we got to put our wedge back in down here to get clearance put our front uh, motor mount bolt back in and then fill it up with oil and we should be good to start it so we got everything back together, filled up with oil, everything's torqued down, all the lines in place, other than our plastic uh, shield right here, which I'm not even going to video that part. So I'm going to actually put this uh, camera on a stand. You can see I got the oil in there. Put this camera on a stand and uh, we'll start it up. Okay, I cheated. First try, uh, found out it was low on fuel. And it does seem like it needed to run a little bit before it started running right. I had to play with the idle. This is somebody else's machine, so I had to adjust the idle and stuff. But anyway, it does run, and I'll fire it up here for you. There you go. Still got to play around with the idle some more, but everything works. Spark works. Um, I'm going to check and see if the battery's charging and then I'll cut back to that and uh, we're done. So the battery is charging 13 volts when the machine's off and uh, it was 16.2 with it running. That's a little higher than I'd like, but uh, hey, factory parts are expensive. Maybe 16.2 is right. You might have to read your specs, but either way, machine's running. We're good to go. Take this back to the customer. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.